is protested. We do not accept or recognize the tribal council, and we will never work with them, because our work as Hopi traditional and religious leaders, we go through our ceremonies and other religious activity, and we sincerely believe that we are taking care of all living things on this earth, all people. This is our work. So we cannot follow that other system and create trouble for any person. The uh, vote by which the Constitution was supposedly adopted was uh, a vote by only a tiny minority of the Hopi people. It was conducted in an atmosphere characterized by all kinds of fraud and deception and trickery on the part of the Interior Department and those who supported them. Oliver Lafarge, who conducted the election for the government, later confessed to the injustice he himself had perpetrated on the Hopi people. The Hopis have been operated on by everybody from Coronado to Kit Carson to Oliver Lafarge. In almost every case, they've suffered for it. Why they should ever trust another white man is a mystery to me. Oil leasing underway, the BIA began seizing Hopi and Navajo livestock. To discourage overgrazing, the government killed or confiscated more than half a million Navajo livestock. Many animals were shot and left to die near the people who had cared for them. Washington says, whatever my wish, it is to be obeyed. That's the only thing that Washington stands for. But his plans are no good, and so today we will starve. The grass became worse after stock reduction, and because of new government grazing restrictions, the people were not allowed to move around in search of better grass. Each family settled in one place and tried to hang on to as much land as possible. They were becoming more like white people, each one saying, this is my land, go away. Many Navajo were forced to leave the land. To support their families, some men found work with the mining companies who were staking their claim to the mineral wealth of the Southwest. World War II changed the lives of the Navajo forever. Some Navajo went to work in munitions factories. Others mined the uranium that was used to make the atomic bomb. Neither the government nor the mining companies warned them of the dangers of radiation. Thousands of Navajo went to war. Many distinguished themselves. An elite corps of Navajo, the Code Talkers, used their ancient language to create a code that was never broken by the Japanese. The Navajo word for potato became the code word for grenade. Egg meant bomb. They transmitted thousands of messages without error, making a major contribution to the Allied victory in the Pacific. When the war ended, the government continued to subsidize the defense industry in the West. As cities like Los Angeles, Phoenix, and Salt Lake were undergoing population explosions, their energy needs became excessive. The utility companies needed a new source of electric power. They began developing coal-fired power plants in the Four Corners region of the West. The idea there was to import energy from this remote area and to export the pollution and the health and environmental consequences of building these kinds of power plants. And this was the beginning of a very intense pressure that grew during the 1960s and 1970s on the resources on, on Indian lands. One third of the nation's strippable coal and half of its uranium is on Indian land. Much of this mineral wealth lies beneath the Hopi and Navajo reservations. Wanting to gain access to these resources, a Mormon lawyer named John Boyden tried to convince the Hopi to hire him as their attorney. Most Hopi refused to even meet with Boyden, knowing he wanted to strip mine their land. Boyden then held fraudulent elections in the Hopi villages. 
he persuaded the BIA to appoint him attorney to the Hopi Tribal Council. The traditional Hopi lost control over their land and life. By 1964, the first major mineral uh, contracts were signed with Peabody Coal. Uh, some three million dollars uh, was given to the Hopi Tribal Council, of which their attorney, John Boyden, uh, received one million. So you can see that it was a rather lucrative client to have. The Boyden firm listed as its clients both the Hopi Tribal Council and Peabody Coal Company. Peabody Coal is the nation's largest coal producer. It is owned by six multinational corporations. Peabody signed leases with both the Hopi and the Navajo Tribal Councils and began stripping 12 million tons a year from the Arizona Plateau called Black Mesa. Black Mesa is a holy shrine to both Hopi and Navajo. Stripping her of her coal is as sacrilegious as bulldozing St. Peter's Basilica for its marble. Three hundred Navajo families lost their homes and grazing lands when the mine came in. They were neither consulted nor compensated. The pure air that once carried Indian prayers to the heavens is now dense with lead, mercury dioxides, and sulfuric acids. Vast networks of power lines crisscross their land. The Indians call the transmission towers white man's gods. 75% of the Navajo have no electricity themselves. Vast quantities of water are used in the process of converting coal to electricity. Every day through evaporation, 20 million gallons of water are wasted at one power plant alone. Scientists are now concerned that in draining the underground water supply, we are affecting the planet's balance. The native people spoke out against the destruction of the environment. We are facing a dangerous spirit ahead. If we do not stop, correct, and change some of these wrongdoings now, we are all going to suffer. Either things that we made will overtake us or nature will take over. Earthquake, flood, rain, Severe drought, severe winter, lightning destructive, great wind destructive. These things will warn us that we are not following the law of the Great Spirit. The Department of the Interior disregarded the pleas of the traditional people and urged the tribal councils to sign leases that were substantially below market value. The Navajo received 4% of the value of their coal, 1.3% of the value of their oil, 3.7% of the value of their uranium, and 1.8% of the value of their gas. In the case of one coal lease, the Navajo were paid 15 cents a ton, the price of a third of a bottle of soda pop. 
the Navajo should have been the richest.